Hi, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life with everyone sequestered at home or their RV and now having to work from that space, I wanted to give you five tips that I think you're going to find very helpful. Hi, it's Jerry and with the coronavirus that's going around so many of us are sequestered at home or in our RV and having to work from there and for many this might be a very new experience. For me it's business as usual. I'll give you just a little brief history of where I came to kind of create these tips I'm going to be sharing with you for over 20 years um, I was your corporate road warrior. Uh, I lived in a plane. My territory stretched from um, Ottawa, Canada to as far south as you can go in the Caribbean, uh, down into the ABC Islands around the Netherlands and Tillys, coast to coast United States, and even sometimes I had to go to the uh, Costa Rica area uh, from San Jose over to the uh, Guanacosta region for some projects over there. Yes, I lived in a plane. I lived in hotel rooms for uh, many, many a night. And what I ended up having to do because I was that nomad, you know, corporate traveler, I had to come up with a number of tips how I could make my office portable. Now, as Joan and I started traveling in the RV, it was just a very simple transition for me to be able to carry that over into the RV. And in 2011, I started a home office. I had an office that was in town and um, it just was no longer useful for me since I meet with most of my clients either personally or over the phone. And um, I just moved into where I'm actually at today into the home office. So I wanna share with you five tips five areas actually of how it can be very beneficial for you to be able to work in a smaller space without the social environment that many of us were typically used to and I hope you're going to find these helpful. The first area is a defined space. If you don't have the luxury of having a home office, this was actually purpose built um, where I have actually two dual editing suites. You're seeing one of those that's behind me where I do a lot of client work and all my bookcases and those types of things. But we're only here about three or four months out of the year. The rest of the time, Joan and I are in the gateway and you know traveling all over the United States many times. Uh, three months out of the year. We're not full timers. We kind of refer to ourselves as long timers uh, since that's the way we travel. So defined space is very important. So for those of you who may be working at home, let's talk about a defined space. You need to be able to ha have an area that you can set up and can be yours. It needs to be quiet. It needs to be an area where you can focus and an area where you can actually conduct business and spread out whatever you need to be able to uh, do in your work, whether it's you know blueprints, if you're working in that type of an area, to filling out forms, uh, working on your laptop, or as you see behind me, um, I've got a big, large, dual screen editing suite that I have to actually set down. And I'll show you in the RV, I've got the same environment in the RV where I have to do my work as well. If you haven't seen our fifth wheel from previous videos that we've done, I'll take you and just show you the little workspace that I created here. This, this worked out fantastic for uh, Joan and I while we're out on the road. And I'll turn the camera around and just kind of like you see that environment and then how Joan and I kind of define our space to be able to work in here. So coming in from the main door, you you kind of see our kitchen area. We, we don't have a booth here. I did not want that when we looked at our fifth wheel. Um, there's, there's the workspace uh, that I actually have. I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit more detail in a second. But you kind of see our living area. And what Joan and I do is, you know, if, if I have a client call, uh, she doesn't mind uh, putting the TV you know, on pause for just a few minutes um, and then she'll, you know, pick back up the TV. Or if I'm going to be on a call for half an hour to an hour, uh, many times uh, she'll just grab a book and read it or, you know, it's time for her to go outside and get some fresh air. Or um, she can, you know, go up the steps here uh, up into the bedroom and we've got a TV up there and, you know, she can watch TV up there. She's in the middle of the program. But what I wanted to be able to show you is uh, is our workspace. Um, this, again, is a dining, uh, the dinette. And, and I've looked at taking this dinette and 
throwing it out and put in a purpose-built desk. And, and every time I think about doing it, I can't figure out why I want to do that. But this is a this this is a dining room table that actually came with this unit. You'll see it had a leaf that you can pull out, and um, this this top actually you know lifts up, but I don't use that anymore. And what it has up underneath uh, un underneath the bottom of it, it has a a key that you turn where you can actually take this table and spin it. This is this is the travel mode uh, for this desk so that when um, the the slides, you're noticing um, there's a slide here and, and there's a slide there. When these slides come in, I, you, you can't have that table turned to where it can actually sit for comfortably. So <clears throat> we don't use this uh, for dining. It's more important for us to be able to use it as the workspace. Uh, I've got a video here that I'll show you where uh, I took these. These are two uh, relatively inexpensive HP monitors. You can buy them just about anywhere, Amazon, Walmart, wherever else. I bought the real expensive ones for a time, and then you just beat them up in the camper, and these are easy to replace if, if I jiggle them to death. And and I'll put a, I'll put a, uh, a link up top where I actually put these on stands so they stay in place. What a great working environment. This is my space. You know, I've got room for a, you know, a, a, a Bluetooth style uh, keyboard and um, and a mouse. And then my uh, big graphic computer goes up underneath. Uh, this would work well for a laptop as well. I, I went out and I got rid of all the dining room chairs and, you know, spent a hundred and something bucks and got me a nice comfortable uh, office chair. This is my second one. I've already wore one out uh, since 2014. And, um, you know, this is a, this is a nice environment. The other thing that you notice here for my workspace, um, I don't know if it will show up well here in the video. Uh, I went to Lowe's, I think, or Home Depot and bought one of these big long power strips. Uh, you seem to never have enough space to plug in, you know, wall warts for the phones and, the hard drive and the computer and the monitor and everything else and 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 you know again this is um this is a great space i just can't tell you how comfortable one of the things i will share and i won't lift this up because it'll wash out the camera but if you'll notice i've got a window there i've got the blinds pulled down and i've got a window there I've had some incredible views to work from um Malmel uh, Corps of Engineer Park. It was one of my favorites of working there and overlooking the Arkansas River and seeing the geese all day long. Oh my gosh, that was great. And then I've got a camping spot uh, I really enjoy at Leisure Acres Campground up in Cleveland, Georgia. We go up there in the, in the fall sometimes. And once in a while, I'm fortunate enough to get a spot up there where I'm overlooking the the pond and seeing everybody out there doing catch and release and I could just go on and on and on but again that really helps with the productivity so again you can take any camper whether it's a a booth or you know whatever you've got and make that your office and uh, for me I'm using a using a pc but for others just a, a simple laptop will get the job done Jerry and Jones fifth wheel boy I miss you. I'm ready to go out on the road again. So for many of you, you know, you're coming out of an office area where you have worked and now you're at home and you may not have that. So where can you work? Well, the kitchen table is a great place. Now, I know if you've got little ones running around, that might not be suitable for you. Uh, if you can get a small card table, a fold, those fl plastic style folding tables that you can fold up and take down when you're not using, place that into a bedroom. Have a comfortable chair you can sit in. Sure, I've got a nice office chair here, but you know, grab a, a chair that's you know, got a good back that you can sit in and, and be comfortable for a period of time. Have that defined area that you can go into every day that you have to work and um, have that be your space. And I, I think that's very, very important. The second tip I want to share is organization. Organization is really critical for productivity again. Again, I do client work. Some of the work that I do is fixed fee. Some of it is hourly. 
and my client is only going to be willing to pay for my productive hours when it's hourly and then when I'm doing fixed fee the longer it takes the less I make so you know if I'm billing for that one specific task that's going to allow so long if it takes me two or three hours to be able to do that because I'm less productive I'm not making as much money so productivity is very very key so let me give you a couple of areas to be able to help you with your productivity one of those is to eliminate BPOC that's B-P-O-C BPOC it is my pet peeve in organization what is BPOC it's big piles of crap <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know I might be getting a little testy here, but it's look at your desk. If your desk area is just an absolute cluttered nightmare, it's going to be very, very difficult to be able to get anything accomplished within a timely fashion. You're going to spend more time going through the piles trying to find what you need to be able to get work done. And, and that's going to add to your frustration, it's going to add to your aggravation, and it's going to add to your productivity. If I could suggest anything with a weekend coming in, get rid of it. Look at the pieces of paper. If you haven't touched it in months and you don't need it and it's trash, throw it away. If it's something that needs to be filed away, file it away. And, and let me stress this. If you pull something out of a file, take that task, put it back in the file, and be done with it. So watch out for BPOC. It will absolutely consume you, consume your space, and consume your time. Where do you keep your files? Yeah, look, there's a number of things that I have to keep up with. I have client contracts. I have other things that I need to be able to keep up with. And again, I am semi-portable. Sometimes I'm at home. Sometimes Joan and I are out on the road for multiple weeks or multiple months at a time, and I need to be able to have an environment. Look, I've tried everything. Um, I put in the two file cabinet in, in the camper. That was a disaster uh, for two reasons. One, one drawer ended up being BPOC, <laughs> and the other one had my files, and I just didn't need that much space. I really needed to be able to trim down what I needed, and it was probably about, I don't know, 30 or 40 files that I needed to have with me at every time, contracts, those types of things, and I needed to be able to get my finger on my fingertips either throughout the week or throughout the month. And uh, I just went back to a basic briefcase. This is exactly what I used when I used to fly in a plane. I've tried the backpack, used a backpack for a long time, but the organization of a briefcase was the best. <clears throat> this is mine. It's, a, it's beat up, it's weathered, it's leather. I love it, love the smell of it. I've been using this thing for years. I actually was using a backpack for a long time and, and had retired this from my days of living in an airplane. And, and I went back to this. One of the things that I like, you know, you've got all kinds of little pockets, uh, my flash drives and things like that. Um, I keep my business cards in here for when I'm traveling and my I Love RV Life contact cards that are in here. Um, you know, things like checkbooks, um, you know, those various types of things. My laptop fits in here perfect that I can take with me. Um, it's got all kinds of pockets that I can, you know, keep specific items in, like uh, I have a few I Love RV Life stickers left over that I give folks. But the biggest thing here is my files. You know, you can see all my files that are in folders here, and I've got easy access to them where I can get my fingers on them at just a moment's time and do whatever needs to be done. Again, it helps with that organization, it helps with speed, helps with time, helps me be able to go in there and get my fingers on them when I need them, and then I can get back to you know, playing if the day's over. The last item I want to talk about in organization is where do you keep all those things that come to you via either email or uh, attached documents. Those things we used to print out all the time. Never, 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 never do I print those out again. That is a thing of the past. Um, I use something like this. I was going to talk about this in the in the tech area, but uh, this is a WD Elements um, hard drive. It's a it's a it's a spare drive that I use, and I use this kind of as my server. Uh, this one's an eight terabyte. You get some, get them in various sizes. I'll go into more details in this uh, in just a little while of where I keep all the 
you know, things that I need to keep up with in the business. Again, I'm a web developer, I'm a video editor, I'm a graphic designer, I'm a, you know, email constant contact professional. You know, I have all these things to where I've got tons and tons and tons of files and graphics and pictures and all those types of things. I'm talking about terabytes and terabytes and terabytes of this stuff. And I've got to have a way to be able to access it for client clients quickly. Uh, some of this stuff I have purchased over time, you know, hundreds of dollars worth of graphics that I've purchased or uh, even more than that in time that I've created over a 10 year span that, you know, I might pull back something that I used several years ago and I don't have to create it again. Time is money. Time is money. And to be able to keep this stuff on a hard drive is very, very important. Uh, and, and I'll talk about storage a little bit more as time goes on, but there are a lot of documents that you'll create that you might need to save and instead of printing them out, you know, Word, PowerPoint, Publisher, uh, Excel, any of those types of documents will allow you to save them as a PDF, give them a unique name, stick them in a folder that you can find later. And then there's other things that you may have to obtain over time. Um, you can see back behind me, I have one of those very, very inexpensive all-in-one uh, printer, fax machines, I never use it for fax, um, and scanners. And sometimes I'll scan, have to scan some type of a document, driver's license, a passport. Somebody will give me a sheet of paper or something that I need to be able to take and maintain and use in a website for development later. And I can scan it, give it right back to them. And I put it in my project folder. Any of those types of things uh, I do. And then somebody asked me the other day, well, what if you need to be able to sign a document? Well, you know, I just signed my name. I, I scanned it. Um, and then uh, I use a PDF editor. Now I use uh, Adobe Acrobat Pro. It's, it's gotten pricey. Um, there's a number of others that are out there um, that you can look at that are PDF editors. Uh, there's just, do a Google search. I can give you all kinds of different names. If, if you want to know some of them, just add a, add a comment down here and I'll give you a list of those that you can look at. And you can buy them. They range, you know, like there's Easter sales that go on or 4th of July sales and you can buy them for 40 or 50 bucks. You Usually it's a one-time purchase around $100. But what this allows you to do is somebody sends you a PDF, you've got to fill it out. So instead of you know, sitting there and typing everything, you know, writing everything down, printing it, and having to scan it, you can run it through this editor, fill it out, drag your signature over to it, resave it as a PDF file, re-email it to them. Saves a ton of time, ton of space, makes you incredibly efficient, makes you very, very organized third area I want to talk about is your technology. Technology, technology, technology. I love it. I have to be careful. It's my addiction. <laughs> I like to buy tech. I like to play with tech. I've probably thrown away more tech than I've ever kept in my life. Well, for many of us, uh, all we need is a good laptop. Uh, you know, just a, this is a Dell. Um, it's, a, it's a good little laptop. I've had it for about a year now. I did an upgrade. If you're going to use something like this in your business every day, <clears throat> make sure that you got enough screen surface, you know, that, that you can get your job done. The last thing you want to use is a little 11 and a half inch or nine inch pad to try to type and do your work all day long. It creates a lot of eye strain. It's going to wreck your posture because you're going to be sitting down, hunching your shoulders and trying to work over that small screen. You know, this for most people who who are now working at home, um, you know, they're, they're working through a, a, a VPN back to the office or, you know, they're doing emails or they're logging in the websites. And, um, you know, a good, uh, a, a good laptop with a, like an i5 processor or something like that, you know, Windows 10 or a nice uh, iMac. Uh, will allow you to get your job done on a regular basis. And, um, you know, they're handy, they're easy, they're very, very portable. Uh, you can move them around the house if you need to, and um, it'll get, a, get the job done. Second, for a lot of these laptops, um, they'll have a, a camera built into them. And um, that camera can be used for uh, video conferencing. I was in two video conferences this week. I'll talk about those in just a second. And if you, but the thing about it is, is sometimes the quality of those uh, small mini cameras uh, are not the best, and the little onboard microphone is not the best. If you can find it, uh, these are. Uh, this is this one's by Logitech. There's a number of different webcams. Unfortunately, because of coronavirus. 
and so many people working at home, these by any brand and any manufacturer, these webcams have absolutely vanished. And if you can find them, uh, the hoarders are charging three, four, five times levels. I think I paid like 50, 60 bucks for this thing. I looked on the web um, before I started this video and um, I found some brand new ones out there for $400. I think that's just absolutely shameful that people are... Um, uh, are you know taking advantage of other folks out there because of that but you know in a in a pinch there's nothing wrong with uh, using your laptop so if you don't have a laptop with a decent camera in it uh, and decent audio don't worry about it if you've got a an iPad tablet or if you have a uh, you know a phone whether it's an you know an Android type phone a modern Android phone like a Samsung my favorite or Jones favorite uh, you know one of the Apple iPhones then um, those work fantastic they really work fantastic so I'll, I'll talk about you know a number of the applications that you can use in just a second but I like this um, these are about twenty dollars they're very very inexpensive um, it's a little it's a little tripod what you don't want to do is set that phone down on the you know down at the desk and do what I call an up the nose shot it makes your head look long your your head's crooked down like that it just it just doesn't look good uh, when you're doing these conference calls and look I had a conference call that was an hour and 15 minutes long uh, this week and if I had to look down at that phone for that whole period of time and then try to type, type on the laptop and do some other things I would have been absolutely miserable at the end of that call these things are about $20. Um, I'm going to put, you know, down in the show notes, you can go to ilovervlife.com and you can see the show notes or at the end of this end of this video, you'll be able to see um, where you can click on the show notes as well. But these things are very, very inexpensive. Like I said, about 20 bucks uh, and you can spread the legs out. What I like is I want to get the phone up about 12 inches. So if you see here, you know, it's giving you pretty much a close up face view um, and you just take your phone, if you can see here and snap this thing in here just like that and uh, now you can set this down on your table and you can kind of adjust it and get it leveled up the way you want the way you want to be able to look and uh, you know sit back from it now get a little straighter there you can sit back from it now and be able to do your video call and be very very comfortable or you can set it off it'll go off camera here uh, but you can set it off at an angle like this and have your I've got my laptop up now and uh, you can sit here and type and be able to talk on the call the other thing that I would encourage you to do is use a set of earbuds when you do that uh, for a couple reasons one it'll help you hear the conversation that's going on one of the conference calls that I was on this week well, I think we had six people that was on it on the on the video call from I mean I had people from Pennsylvania to South Carolina to a couple of different places in Georgia and we were having this call and uh, the mics on these things that you know come with your phones are pretty good and the earbuds are pretty good and uh, it really doesn't look distracting you know when you've got them plugged in but it will help you hear it'll help people hear you get some of the echo out of the room uh, that's the other thing that goes on when you do these but uh, this is a great option uh, to be able to do it. 20 bucks is cheap and I don't think you're going to be able to find one of these right now. I talked about storage. Uh, if you're doing a lot of work to where you don't want to lose it and you don't want to risk using it and your business is not providing you with some type of a way to be able to do storage, two things that you need to do. Uh, for me, my data is worth a lot, um, especially when I'm doing things like graphic work, logo work, any of those types of things. Um, somebody sends me something to create blogs with, any of those types of things. That, that content is extremely, extremely valuable. And again, I shared with you earlier, these are uh, WD Elements. Um, I'll put in the show notes uh, the two I would recommend. You can get a four terabyte, I think it's running looking at my notes it's looking running around eighty five dollars and you can double it and go to eight terabytes for hundred and forty five bucks this is an eight terabyte unit and uh, when we travel uh, I've got a couple of these um, and I just you know s slip them in the bureau drawer you know in between some jeans or some shorts so that it'll have some padding to be able to protect it uh, so that the bumps don't break them sure you can go with SSDs uh, they're very very expensive uh, when you start getting up into ranges of these terabytes you can get into the many 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 hundreds of dollars and these little spinning drives are very very inexpensive and um, again this is what I use to be able to keep all my uh, all my important uh, information and my backup off my laptop 
onto this. Also, I put it in the cloud. Now, I'm a, a, a big Dropbox user fan, and uh, I use Dropbox um, with, it, there's so many ways that you can use Dropbox, and I won't go into all this in the video, but Dropbox is pretty inexpensive. I think right now, five terabytes is running a little over $12 a month. And there's so much that you can do with it. So I literally back up all my files here and I back them up in the cloud. No matter where I go, whether I'm at home, on the road, or sitting in a client's office, I can gain access to that critical data I need. If you're a Google user and you want to use Google, um, I use that as well with some of my clients. It just depends on what, what they want. Um, you can get two terabytes for about 10 bucks a month for that. So between your backup of storing it on a hard drive and then storing it in the cloud, you can protect your data and you don't have to zip it up uh, or you don't have to compress it. You can leave it in a kind of in a, your raw format so you can pull it down in seconds if you've got an internet connection. And this plugs up, this is USB 3 um, and if you've got a USB 3 port on your laptop or your PC, you know, data acquisition on this type of stuff is seconds. It's super, super fast. Make sure you protect your data. Um, you drop that laptop, um, you're using it every day and it damaged and you've got to run out and grab you another one and everything is gone or you've got to try during this crazy time we're living now to find a computer tech who can take the data off your laptop and put it on your new one. Good luck with that. Um, having all your data backed up onto one of these devices or in a cloud, you're back on, you know, you're, you're back to going in seconds again. It's, it's something I think is essential when you're uh, doing work from home or definitely if you're traveling around in an RV, it's absolutely essential. Uh, lastly, on, on the area of tech, I will talk about, you know, how do you conduct meetings with others, whether it's a, a single peer-to-peer, -peer, sure, you can make a phone call, but sometimes I have to share you know, my desktop uh, if I'm doing a training for a new website that I brought up or we're doing something with forms or we want to review uh, a video before we post it on YouTube or on the client's desk or in the call that I had earlier this week with one of my clients, there was you know like six of us uh, that we were reviewing some content and uh, setting up some work for the next couple months. And, um, you know, we needed to be able to share our desk and some slides and some spreadsheets and those types of things. And it, it was really a very positive experience. So there's several ways to be able to do it. If, if it's not, you know, a gang, um, I like to use Skype. I'm a big Skype fan. Uh, first of all, you can use it for free and, and it'll work on anything. Uh, I don't care whether it's Mac or PC or phone or iPad and everybody can be in different environments and you can talk and it works fantastic and you can share screens as well. It's limited on what you can do, but it does an absolutely fantastic job. Big, big Skype fan. Now, for my professional work where I'm having to do things like my group meeting that I was on earlier this week, um, I like GoToMeeting. Uh, there's several different uh, environments out there. GoToMeeting is one of those. WebEx is another one that's very, very good. Zoom is very good. I know we've been seeing a lot of things of people getting Zoom bombed and they've had some security issues. Uh, so, you know, I guess if you're talking to grandma and the kids, it's okay to get Zoom bombed. Um, but uh, if I'm doing client work and, you know, working with my peers, the last thing I want to have happen is get Zoom bombed. That would just absolutely be catastrophic. GoToMeeting is super simple. It's not that very expensive. Um, and um, you can, you know, we were working on a single screen. I saw the individuals that each one is talking on. It's, it's super easy to be able to tap one key and you know do screen sharing it's just an absolutely wonderful environment so if you're needing to do something like that consider you know Skype for free works great some people say well why don't we just use Fa FaceTime well FaceTime is not ubiquitous across all platforms Skype is and all these others that I was speaking about most of those are web-based anyway and, and they're super easy to use and it's really nice sometimes just to be able to see face to face, get back in the virtual office per se, uh, and work with your clients and do those types of things. So um, consider one of those. One thing that I will share if you're brand new to the environment of Skype or GoToMeeting, WebEx, etc., before you attempt 
to do any type of a call with someone else, be it a client or even if it's a relative, you know, <laughs> across the states. Take, um, take some time and, uh, and practice with it just a little bit. You'll find out that it's relatively easy to use, but you don't want to be fumbling through this um, while you're trying to make a call. It'll kill your productivity uh, and kill your professionalism as well. Just a tip I thought I'd share. So while you're working at home and you have that defined space, you need to be able to define your work hours, whatever that may be. Now again, for me, I'm client driven. A lot of times I will block out times for the day, like yesterday was a, you know, a full eight hour, nine hour work day for me. And um, I was doing video editing for a client all day long. And um, so that was my day of work. Today I'm working for I Love RV Life, so I'm actually making this YouTube video. And I've set out a defined time for that. So I actually define specific times. Now for you, your place of work may define your hours. You may be you know, doing your typical eight to five, or you're actually working in blocks. And again, for those of you have, who have little ones or teens that's running around that's now demanding your time because um, you know, you're having to take care of them now instead of uh, going to work, you might want to sit down with the family and go, okay, mom, dad have to work for these periods of time. I need two hours of quiet space. For those of you who have even smaller ones, um, nap time is a great time uh, to be able to work, to grab that, you know, hour and a half to two hours to really be able to get, you know, that the type of work that you need when it needs to be quiet. It's a great time to be able to make, you know, calls to your peers, to be able to do client work, any of those types of things. So define your hours. The best thing that you can do is set a schedule. And if you can possibly maintain that schedule, it will reap great benefits in your productivity. Last thing that I want to talk about is take time for you. Uh, one of the things when you're in an office, uh, you have a routine. You come in, you get, you're going to get up and you're going to go get coffee. Um, you're going to take lunch at a specific time. You're going to get up out of your chair. You're going to go to a meeting. There's several things that you were doing on a regular basis throughout the day and throughout the week that, um, you know, kept you active. What happens when you're at home or in your RV? You're going to be stationary in one spot or could be stationary in spot for long, long periods of time. That's not good. Um, it's not good for a couple reasons. One, um, you'll, just, you'll just burn yourself out if you just sit there for three, four, five hours. I have to be careful, especially when I'm working on things like websites and writing code, uh, or I'm doing a lot of graphic work, that type of thing, and I, I call it getting in the groove. I will get in the groove. I don't want to break the groove, you know, because I've got this creative uh, avalanche of ideas and things that's going on, especially when you're writing code and I don't want to lose that uh, and it's very very dangerous because I will catch myself personally um, sitting there for three four five hours never get out of a chair that's not good it's not healthy for you at all it's bad for your eyes it's bad for your posture and when, when I do do that when I get up I'm just I'm very fatigued when I get through in that type of an environment look I've been doing this for years so you know kind of preaching to the choir here but uh, you know take time for yourself one of the things I would suggest is every hour every hour get up if you're not using a Fitbit or something like that um, you know set Set an alarm on your, your Amazon if you've got, you know, uh, Madam A, I won't mention her name so she won't go off, um, you know, tell her that, you know, uh, set, set a timer for an hour and if nothing more, stand up out of your chair, you know, stretch your arms, move back and forth a little bit, give yourself about two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, something like that just to get the kinks out. Take a couple, you know, four, five, six, ten deep breaths, get some oxygen in your system again, sit back down, boom, your productivity will go slam through the roof again. And then also about, you know, every two hours plus, somewhere between two or three hours, get out of your environment, get out of the office. Uh, the office, again, may be the bedroom, it may be the dining room table, or it may be the bench in the RV. Do something to get out. You know, if you're in the RV like me, I will get out, I'll walk outside, stand under the awning, breathe some air, 
you know, watch the critters run by or the, you know, whatever else is going on in the campground. You know, I'll do that type of stuff just to give myself about five minutes, 10 minutes max of just being able to get the blood flowing in the body again. If I'm in the house, I'll walk around. Um, I'll go get me a glass of water. Be careful, you know, keep you some water at the desk or at least use that as an, ex as an excuse to go rehydrate and, you know, just you treat your body well when you're, you're sitting here. Do not sit for hours on end, hours on end. And we'll do that when we're at home and not at work um, and uh, take care of your body. Well, I hope you found this helpful working at home or working from your RV, being that nomad worker. Uh, I've done it for a long, long time, 20 plus years, maybe close to 30 now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it shows. But uh, the thing that I have found from, you know, doing 2 million miles in an airplane um, and working, you know, again, coast to coast in multiple countries. Uh, how do you work, get the job done and, you know, s satisfy uh, the requirements that your employer have asked of you, your employer or your clients? Uh, I will share one thing with you of just saying that any environment can be your workspace. Again, whether it's a bedroom, a kitchen table, a defined space like this, a booth or a, a table inside your uh, RV, uh, any of those places can be your workspace, you know, just as long as you can set it up and get the job done. I'll, I'll share this with you. The most unusual workspace I had, I had a client, uh, the telephone company in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Yeah, I know. It's, it's tough. Somebody had to do it. But uh, we had this big project on uh, St. John and um, I was having to work out there with a crew of people and the hood of my car uh, was my office for the week and uh, I would have a hot spot and my laptop and uh, off to my left was North Shore uh, where is probably one of the most fantastic snorkeling beaches in the world. Yeah, I know. And uh, I worked from my uh, work from the hood and that was uh, the hood of my car. And that was my environment uh, for the week. And uh, hey, not too shabby, huh? But, uh, you know, you can you can make your workspace um, anywhere. Uh, just, you know, manage your organization, manage your technology, manage your time, um, and manage yourself to be able to get the job done and take care of yourself while you're doing it. Well, I probably didn't cover everything in the detail that some of you wanted. Uh, I apologize for that, but I'll be glad to share more. If you will put in the comments, Jerry, I would like to know more about this, or you didn't cover this specific area, can you cover this? Uh, I'll do my best to create uh, you know, a series of videos over the next several weeks while we're all sequestered in our homes and our RVs um, and to try to help you out and help you be more efficient and more productive as you're working from home and working remotely wherever you may be. Well, it doesn't matter, folks. It doesn't matter that we're not able to travel right now. It, this too will pass. And you know what? We'll get to get back in that RV. Yeah, I love RV life and I know you do too.